Hello, uh, my name is Martin Ruiz. I'm uh, a postdoc at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. And I would like to talk a little bit about um, some methods that we use during O2 um, for counterpart detection to gravitational waves. So, um, I'm part of TORUS. TORUS is the Transient Optical Robotic Observatory of the South. That's an image of the um, construction site where it's being built as a, top, a mountain top uh, at the Atacama, Atacama Desert in the Argentinian site. And like I said, uh, right now it's uh, under construction. Uh, but in the meantime, we, during O2, we used uh, a network of other telescopes. Uh, the one on the on the right is the T80 South in Cerro Alto It's in Chile. It's a 0.8 meter optical telescope. Um, actually, this one is the one in uh, Cordoba, Argentina. It's a 1.5 meter optical telescope. And then we have a third one in Texas, the CTMO. It's a 0.4 meter optical telescope. Um, so what are the challenges for small field view telescopes? Um, by small, I mean small compared to the light like, uncertainty regions that spans like hundreds of uh, square degrees, typically. Uh, the most obvious serious limitation is um, uh, coverage. Uh, to remedy, remedy that, you target only the most likely host galaxies. That's what we do. We are, I'm not going to talk about this topic in this talk, but uh, another crucial element is to have a fast transient detection system. You typically done that by comparing with uh, archive reference images, and that this allows for to represent the object. So GW17 or A17 was the first uh, gravitational wave that gave us uh, an optical counterpart. The it was uh, first discovered by the one meter two hemisphere team, and unfortunately for us, uh, the target galaxy NGC 4993 uh, fell out of our target list, so we couldn't catch it on the first uh, night, but the second night we could image it. This is a, an image uh, of the transient. This is a composite image with three filters. And the second one is a, a zoomed in uh, version of the, the same. It's the same image, but zoomed in and with the galaxy subtracted, so you can see the, the transient more clearly. So can we expect another one like, like this one? This uh, GW17 or U17 was like pretty particularly had a, a few things that, that were that made us uh, very lucky for us to discover it. It has an associated uh, GRV. We know Kilowatt is an isotropic uh, radiation, but uh, to catch the GRV, we will have to be in the, in the line of sight. It was found with three detectors running, so that means that um, the, uh, down from the hundreds of square degree uncertainty, um, it fell down to 28, um, so pretty well localized. It was relatively bright in the optical and it was close, and it was in an observable region of the sky. So any of this uh, we may not have in the, in the future. So that's why, that's why it's very important to have a, a, a method to, to detect this. Uh, during O2, we used uh, the image difference method or the difference image analysis. This is a cartoon version of how it would work. You have a new image, you compare it with the reference image, you do a subtraction. Uh, it's not a simple subtraction, you just have to uh, adjust for different PSF gains and other things. And then hopefully, on the difference image, you will catch the, your optical transit. This is how it looks like in reality. Uh, you can see that for the most part, the subtraction is pretty good. But near saturated stars or bright stars, the the methods tend to to lack there, and then you have a bunch of uh, false positives that can be um, uh, be like noise in the candidate list. So to mirror the so let's just summarize a, a bit of a, uh, the issues we have the image difference. Like I said, it's, it's very it can be you can make it very clean in small regions once like. To 500 by 500 pixels. If if you have uh, bigger images, the quality tends to decrease. Um, the subtraction artifacts still require either a manual video or some machine learning video, and it requires you to align images. Some of the methods are computationally expensive. Not all of them. Uh, now there are ones uh, based in the Fourier transform that are uh, very fast. During O2, we use uh, machine learning to reject artifacts. Uh, our first method included a random forest. This one uh, we used uh, features the 
the social structure parameters um, to train this uh, random forest, which is basically a collection of decision trees. And then uh, after the, the, it is trained, then we can pass the images and inspect the, the, the candidates. We reach accuracy during the training phase, we reach accuracy 89%, 92% precision, 86% recall, so pretty good numbers. We also try with uh, a convolutional neural network. In this case, you do not need um, a set of parameters uh, or features to, to do the classification. You just work directly with the pixels. And for this uh, CNN, we were feeding uh, thumbnails of a difference image of, of the, the different image to the to the CNN, and then the CNN would classify it as a real transient or as a uh, subtraction artifact. We reach accuracy 99.5 percent, so that's pretty pretty good with with this method. The question that remains is, can we do better? And by do better, I mean can we get rid of uh, doing the image difference? We ultimately need a classifier that that can distinguish between these two situations. You either you have a transient or not. If you don't have a transient, hopefully your um, source is going to appear in both the new uh, image and the reference. Uh, when you have a transient, you expect to find a source in the new image, but nothing on the, on the reference. So we, this is, this is actually very preliminary results. Um, we are working with simulated uh, images right now. Uh, we train on a thousand simulated samples. Uh, these are like um, Gaussian profile um, sources, uh, oriented and not symmetric. Uh, we train them on a thousand of them, or 50% each class, uh, testing on 100 samples and validating on a thousand more samples. Only uh, compiling on over 100 epochs, we reach 100% uh, accuracy. On the, the architecture of the CNN, we basically put the two, the two images in a two-channel image. Um, first the input layer, and then we add a hidden layer and two activation layers. Once behind, once behind the, the first one, and another one behind the, the final <coughs> layer that, that gives the, 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 um, the final classification. Uh, so this is a very pre preliminary result. But it's promising. I think this could be refined a little bit more, uh, and we could use this during O3. Uh, even though it's very promising, there is a there are still questions on whether it's going to work. Uh, first of all, will it work in crowded fields? We don't know if we have contamination from other sources in in, in our images. Will it still work? Um, we don't know if if there are unresolved sources in the new image. Uh, and especially in the case that we expect to find that what, what about sources that are, that are around extended objects, the galaxies. So ultimately we have to test on real data. This is what we're going to do with your node 3. So as conclusions, uh, your node 2, we had a difference image and machine learning on all the O2 alerts. We, did, I didn't, we didn't identify any optical transient. That's expected because, um, except for the obviously the, the kilo number, mm -hmm. you know the binary black holes. We don't, we didn't identify anyone, any, and then we will try uh, this new CNN method for fast transient identification. You know, three. Hopefully, this will free us to from doing the alignment of images. It could uh, give an improvement in on speed, and hopefully, we don't need to do any PSF compensation. So that's all I have. Thank you. Yeah, uh, right now we are, uh, yeah, 
to simulate the, the real ones, those are done with, uh, through injections, like uh, artificial injections of transients. And uh, we, in, in, the, in this second part, the, where I use the CNN, these are simulated um, with parameters for, uh, using, I'm not using any particular parameter of any test scope right now. I'm just using uh, the sources that have uh, between 5 and 20 SNR over the noise, uh, of, over the background noise, and then uh, different parameters for the orientation, <coughs> PSF. Uh, yeah, right now we have only one hidden layer, and that's a fully connected layer to the actual image, and we're not using any kernel so far. Yeah. All right, let's thank our speaker again.